Welcome back to Cody's Freezer. If you've been watching my channel for some time, you've probably seen the inside of my freezer before, and every time you might have noticed a pumpkin or two. And in fact, this pumpkin has been in my freezer since at least October 2016. It's October 2020 right now, so that's four years this pumpkin's been in a freezer. I had two pumpkins. You see this one's kind of gotten a little bit moldy there. Uh, the other freezer, this is actually a new freezer, I had to get a new one. The old one stopped working when I was gone for a week and, well, the pumpkin that I had Cody's lab carved into it sadly turned into mush. But I did have a backup pumpkin and here it is. <laughs> you can tell that it is extremely freezer burned, assuming I can get my camera to focus on it. There we go. It is soft and squishy. It's almost like it's made out of foam. It's very light. See if we compare it to a similarly sized fresh pumpkin. It is nearly a fifth of the weight. Where'd the weight go? Well, it's lighter because this pumpkin is dry. There's almost no water left in it. Isn't that crazy? Like, where'd the water go? Well, if we look down here in the fridge portion of this appliance, we'll see a tub of water. This is what comes out of the freezer when it defrosts. Some of this water was in the pumpkin. In order to properly explain how the water got from the pumpkin to the frost in the freezer, I'm going to need to draw a phase diagram. So let's uh, erase my little pumpkin here. Okay, so here is my rough phase diagram for water. If you've done much chemistry, you've probably seen this or something like it. Uh, we've got gas, liquid, and solid here. Ice, water, steam. Increasing temperature across the bottom, increasing pressure across the side. And I've got a few key temperatures and pressures marked. This here, where all three combine, all three phases coexist, that is the triple point. That occurs at six thousandths of a standard atmosphere. It's the kind of pressure you see on the surface of Mars or in a vacuum chamber. So what this diagram is telling you is if you have a sample of water at 20 degrees Celsius and normal atmospheric pressure, it'll just sit there happily being a liquid. But if you heat it up and raise the temperature, it'll move over. And once it hits 100 degrees Celsius, the water becomes unstable and it'll turn into a gas. If you go the other way and cool it down, go from liquid to a solid, it'll become ice. Likewise, if you decrease the pressure while keeping the temperature the same, it'll go down and turn into a gas. Down here, just a low pressure gas. But there's a problem. You see, in order to cross these lines, you need to add or remove considerable energy. To go across this line, you need the heat of vaporization. This line, it's the heat of fusion. You know that if you take a pot of water and set it on the stove and heat it up, it doesn't just all flash to steam instantly as soon as it hits 100 degrees Celsius. It'll sit there right at 100 degrees Celsius and boil as you're adding heat to it. You know, the water will just sit there and boil away. You know, it's turning into a gas, sure, but only some of it. This is because in order to pull the water molecules apart, it takes energy. And in a liquid, the water molecules are basically touching, and in a gas, they're very far apart. So you need to pull them apart to be able to form the gas. So if you take your sample of water and you put it in a vacuum chamber, it will drop in pressure until it reaches this line. Then it'll actually start boiling, even though it's still only at room temperature. As the water boils, unless you're adding heat to it, the vapor will actually carry away energy making the rest of the water colder. If you look at the temperature gauge, you can see that the temperature is actually dropping. See that? Even though the water's boiling, it's actually getting colder. So, your sample of water placed in the vacuum chamber will follow this line down until it reaches the triple point, at which point it'll start to freeze. The water will actually boil until it freezes. Let's just let it do its thing for a little while. 
You know what? I think it's actually freezing. Yeah, those are ice crystals forming in there. I've always thought that was pretty cool. So the vapor's leaving, it's carrying away heat, the rest of the water is freezing, and then once it all freezes, or at least all the water that's left, it'll continue to drop down across this line. But now, instead of boiling, it's sublimating. The gas is leaving as a vapor without any bubbles being formed. And it'll continue to cool until it reaches whatever pressure you're able to maintain. A thousandth of an atmosphere, that's about negative 30 Celsius, right about there. Uh, these aren't actual numbers, they're just an example. If you're able to maintain that pressure and you add heat energy to your ice, it'll just vaporize directly from the solid to a gas. You add more heat, you'll get more vapor. That is, of course, assuming you have a perfect vacuum pump that can handle unlimited volume, which usually you don't. <laughs> so what we do if we're trying to get a sample of water to go from a solid to a gas in a vacuum chamber, say we're trying to dry a piece of food without going through the liquid phase, so if we go through the liquid phase it'll turn to mush, then what most uh, freeze-drying systems have is something that's very cold inside of the chamber. Some expansion coil or something where the frost can build up on it. So now if this is at say negative 40 degrees Celsius and your sample of water is at negative 10 degrees Celsius, the pressure of the that the water wants to maintain over here is uh, 0 0.04 atmospheres per se and over here it wants to go to a thousandth of an atmosphere, the vapor is going to move. It's going to collect over here on the cold spot. It's going to pull the vapor away, keeping the pressure low. Now this would cause the ice to cool down, but we're adding heat energy to keep it up at the negative 10 degrees Celsius. So it continues to vaporize. We're essentially just moving the ice from the food to the cold trap. And you might have noticed this is exactly what was happening to the pumpkin in the freezer. In fact, that pumpkin is freeze-dried. But how could this work if the pumpkin's up here at, you know, one atmosphere of pressure? You know, so I think it's like negative 20 Celsius inside the freezer. Well, the freezer might not be that good, but it's, it's way up here. How did we take the water in the pumpkin and vaporize it without decreasing the pressure. So normally, in order to do that, you'd have to go straight across here and go through the liquid phase. And that would have caused the pumpkin to turn into mush. The key is that this pressure doesn't mean atmospheric pressure. That means vapor pressure. That's the pressure of the water vapor. The rest of the atmosphere, the oxygen, the nitrogen, really doesn't matter. See, if I have the expansion coil inside the freezer, at, say, negative 20 Celsius, the pressure of the water vapor is going to be three thousandths of an atmosphere. And if my pumpkin is a little bit warmer, then it'll be up here around four thousandths of an atmosphere. Now the water vapor wants to move over and collect on the cold spot and become frost. What the air does, the oxygen and nitrogen particles, they kind of get in the way and slow this process down. In a vacuum chamber it can just go straight across, nothing impeding it, but in the normal atmosphere there's a lot in the way and the gas has to basically slowly diffuse over. If I were to try to heat up the pumpkin, the water vapor would build up next to it. it you know, it didn't transfer over fast enough. So now the pressure increased and you can go into the liquid phase. So you can only heat the pumpkin very slowly. You know, basically all I had heating it was just the heat from the room going, you know, through the wall of the freezer into the pumpkin and then over to the expansion coil. And along the way, it carries some water vapor, thus drying out the pumpkin. This is a pumpkin that has been freeze-dried in an ordinary consumer-grade freezer. It's been freezer dried. <laughs> a 
vacuum pumps required. So anyway, uh, I don't actually need to keep this pumpkin in the freezer anymore. That'll free up some space. It's dry. It's not melting. I've actually had it out of the freezer for a couple of hours now. and Everything's fine. It hasn't turned into a puddle of goop. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next time. like I was expecting. Extremely freezer burned. It's got that you know, flavors from the freezer absorbed into it. And also it's moldy fruit. <laughs> <laughs>